Hi guys and welcome back to the Mighty Blues. My name is of course Cameron and welcome back today to another video. I hope you all are doing well. It is Friday. I hope you all have had a fantastic week and are looking forward to your weekend. Whatever you are up to. It's an Everton free weekend this one. So enjoy it. Enjoy it while you can. Obviously, Everton not playing until Monday night against Crystal Palace at Goodison Park. The game preview to that game will be up over the next 24 hours, so look out for that one. But we have a weekend of no stress and no worry, at least, about actual games of football. We're probably going to spend it still stressing and worrying about Everton's current situation regarding the takeover. There's a lot of things going on surrounding Everton Football Club off the pitch at the moment, and it means that when we have these weekends where we don't play until Monday night, typically you might think, oh yeah, happy days, no stress, no anxiety, no worry, just chilling for a few days and then obviously turning up at Goodison on Monday. But as we know over the last few years or so, <clears throat> that hasn't been the case because Everton don't necessarily have to play a game of football for there to be an absolute uh, heap of stress uh, piled on us uh, for, for various different other reasons and obviously this takeover situation has been ongoing now for some months and it seems like it's coming to a head. It seems like we're getting close to a point where there's going to be some form of decision made at some point soon. But we very much still are up in the air about what that decision will be and why that decision has been made. Um, I haven't done a lot of videos talking about the takeover. I haven't spoken an awful lot about it. I haven't dedicated uh, a lot of time sitting down and discussing it. And the reason for that is because, firstly, <clears throat> a lot of the things that are out there at the moment are speculation. Now, I'm not by any sense of the imagination suggesting that the things that are, you know, floating around the media and social media, etc., aren't true or, or don't have any truth in them. But the biggest point is is that nobody really knows what's going on or where this is up to or whether this will be passed or whether it won't be passed. All as we've got is different information from different people telling us different stories and that very much is where we are at the moment. I think we've got certain journalists telling us that, you know, 777 haven't provided um adequate answers to the Premier League. We had Richard Masters come out a couple of weeks ago and say that he hadn't received uh, adequate enough answers from 777 and that's why the process is stalling. We've got other uh, sources coming out and saying 777 have answered everything the Premier League has wanted to know in great detail and obviously the approval from the FA and the FCA is there so it, it, it seems to be a Premier League issue. We've got other reports suggesting that 777 can't afford to buy Everton, certain reports suggesting Evan, uh, 777 can afford to buy Everton. The reality is, is we don't really know exactly what's going on at the moment. We just know that it's, let's be perfectly honest, this is a bit of a, uh, uh, um, what's the phrase to use? It It's a bit of a nightmare at the minute. Um, and like I said, we, we don't seem to know when this is going to be resolved, even though there's a lot more information out there now than what there, there was two or three months ago, which seems to suggest that we're getting closer to some form of solution. But I don't think any of us could genuinely sit there and say with any conviction that we know what the outcome is going to be. Now, the problem I've got with <coughs> not only 777, but this whole sort of takeover process and, and the Premier League's um, policy regarding uh, clubs being taken over is it, it it's almost put to us in the media that this is a, a very basic sort of process that the Premier League are provided with all the information that they um, request and that they require and then they then make a decision as to whether or not they believe you know, the, the, the people wanting to buy said football club are suitable of running and paying for said football club. Now, that <clears throat> would work and makes a lot of sense if 
there was a scenario in which the Premier League were to turn around and say, no, we don't believe that you're capable of running a football club. We don't believe that you've got the finances to run a football club at this level, which obviously, uh, you know, ultimately is turning over a ridiculous amount of money every single year and in, in, in a loss and, and not making as much as we, you know, we would like to hope to be making. So, no, we're not going to pass this process. Now, if that had happened in previous years to previous owners, and, and yes, there has been times, I'm sure, where the Premier League have rejected proposals, but it never really seems like it's a a proper rejection it almost seems like it's uh we're not passing you because of this and if you now go away and resolve this or find an answer to this then you can come back and we may pass you and what that says to me is that this isn't really a process to determine whether or not 777 are actually capable and fit enough to run Everton Football Club. It's more of a process of how long 777 take to give the Premier League the information that they want for them to then pass the Premier League. Because Richard Master, eh, sorry, passed the um, approval because Richard Master's coming out and saying things in in his meeting with the. Um, is it the DCMS a couple of weeks ago? Like this process will take as long as it needs until we've got the you know the adequate answers. For me, it almost tells us that this takeover is going to happen. It's just the case of how long before the Premier League is satisfied with the information that Seven 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 have given them. Now, if it was up to me, that policy should be well. You've got until this date to provide us with the answers that we require. And if you do not provide us with the answers that we require, then you do not take over the football club, period. That would be the correct way of doing things, in my opinion. You've got six weeks or whatever it, 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 it said, you know, when, when the, the process first began. I think it said four to six weeks. You've got maximum of six weeks for us to get exactly what we need. And if you don't provide it in that period of time, then you will not get approval. Now, we are like, what? six months <clears throat> down the line now and we're still being told <clears throat> we don't know we don't know how long it's going to take we don't know when it's going to be resolved because we haven't had the you know adequate answers well how long does this process go on mr masters how long do we sit here and wait for adequate answers is this a case of this is just going to continue forever and ever and ever until we get the answers or is there a point where the Premier League stand up and say, no, you've had more than enough time, you've not given us what we need, you've not proved you're a suitable and capable owner, so, you know, unfortunately, we're going to have to um, reject your application. Now, I think there's a couple of reasons why that isn't happening at the moment, and it very much seems like it's just a case of we will, we will wait until we get what we want from you. One of them is because, A... Everton need this takeover or we need a takeover of some sort because of the financial position and the financial situation that we're in. We already know that Everton are currently in a position where we owe 777 a significant amount of money. Now, if they take over the club, obviously that will be, um, you know, reverted into whatever it gets changed into and, and, it, and it probably won't go against the club. As I said, one of the biggest reasons as to why I haven't spoken much on the takeover in the last six to 12 months is because I don't know what goes into the passing of one multi-million pound business to another. I'm not a businessman. I've never done a deal in which, it, it, you know, a, a huge company is being changed over ownership. I've never been a part of that. I've never even been in the room for those types of discussions. So I'll be perfectly honest, much like I'm sure a lot of us I haven't got a fucking clue what's going on, and I said this in a video <clears throat> a couple of weeks ago, and, and I very much stick by this. When I started this channel six years ago, I never started it with the impression or the idea that I'd ever be sitting here talking about finances or talking about FFP or profit and sustainability or where Everton can make more money. I didn't start a finance fan channel i didn't start a fan channel which delves into the ins and outs of everton football club and the daily running i'm in only interested in watching games of football 
The reason I started the fan channel, honestly, is because I was sick to the back teeth of Everton ruining my weekend, losing a game of football, and me being in a mood for two, three, four days afterwards. I started the channel because I thought, you know what, if I can go on and I can have a little bit of a rant for 10 or 15 minutes into a camera, even if nobody watches it, at least I'll get that off my chest and I'll be able to enjoy the rest of my weekend without worrying. I never did this or ever wanted to do this to be privy to conversations like this because it's complicated business that I haven't got a clue about and that, like I said, it just doesn't seem like anybody really know really knows what's going on at the moment. We've had more updates today. Regarding the situation, Josh, I'm a footballer, reported that a new document has shown that 777 partners need Everton even more than the club needs them. It outlines the strategy, <coughs> pardon me, it outlines the strategy behind the attempted takeover put together by ACAP, a New York risk solution and service provider. ACAP is run by Chairman and CEO Kenneth King, who is alleged of being part of a complex and massive fraud in, sorry, co- Rent, uh, who is alleged to being a part of complex and massive fraud in an ongoing civil lawsuit in the USA and has sat in on meetings of the 777 steering community. So this, you know, again, is <clears throat> another article, another piece of information, another rumor that just seems to dig the heels in about how worrying this situation actually is. Now, Like I said, we don't quite know what's going on. We don't quite know whether 777 will be the new owners of Everton Football Club. We don't quite know whether, if they are rejected, Fardab Mashiri will continue to fund the football club. What I think the general consensus is at the moment, and and this is certainly my understanding and my consensus, and and feel free to correct me in the comments or um, tell me if you you think I've I've gone a little bit off off course here, but my general understanding is that at this current moment, Everton's options are 777 coming in and taking over the football club, or the football club potentially going into administration. Now, both of those have huge, huge potential negative side effects. The 777 stuff, obviously, we've just mentioned there. You know, there's a a, a load of noise around 777 at the moment, around their involvement in other football clubs, around their involvement in various other different things across the world, mostly in the USA. A lot of reports suggesting that they are... In a little bit of trouble, shall we say, with a few different companies or a few different people. So that isn't ideal. Going into administration, whilst it would completely remove all of our debt and we wouldn't owe anybody anything and we would effectively be able to start again from a financial standpoint, it would guarantee that we were relegated, meaning that we would lose the majority of the current playing squad, I feel, either because they would want to be sold to Premier League sides or we couldn't afford to keep them like players like Mason Holgate, for example, who probably wouldn't attract much attention, but he's on upwards of £70,000 a week. So how are we going to cope with that when we've gone into administration? And like I said a couple of weeks ago, it might not be that serious. It might not be that um, dramatic. It might not be that drastic, but that is certainly what it feels like at the moment. And it very much feels like the fate of our football club is just dangling and the Premier League are just leaving it to dangle. I, in and I mean this when I say this, by the way, um, I think I said this a couple of years ago, out of anger, but looking back, it was purely out of anger, whereas this time, I'm fully 100% serious with it. I have never felt this detached from Everton Football Club in my life. Now, I don't just mean detached in terms of I don't feel a huge emotional connection when I go to Goodison or when I watch the games or I'm not hugely, like, loving of the players. I genuinely mean I find myself actively doing other things to avoid having to think about Everton Football Club or having to talk about Everton Football Club. You know... 
I've never, ever, ever contemplated getting rid of my season ticket. This year, I had to have a long think about whether or not, ultimately, it was going to be worth it. Now, granted, after that thought process, I've renewed my season ticket, so some could say, well, you, you haven't emotionally checked out, have you? But my point is, is that the motivation for me at the moment with Everton Football Club is just absolutely on the floor. And it's because <clears throat> of a number of different things. One of them being we're in our third consecutive relegation battle on the spin. Now, whether or not we deserve to be there is is a completely different question. And I agree this time round, it's, it's much less of our fault than it has been over the last two years. However... We are still in this position, whether or not it's our fault or not, whether or not we should be or we feel we deserve to be. We are now in our third consecutive relegation battle on the spin. And I I think I've been through every emotion with, Ever- with Everton Football Club, pardon me, over the last three years. I remember when we stayed up against Crystal Palace, I was absolutely buzzing, I was on the pitch, I was celebrating, I was up till 3 o'clock in the morning, you can see the videos on this channel, I was visibly not not buzzing in terms of hugely happy, but I was relieved, I was, um, <clears throat> I had this amazing feeling of togetherness with the football club on that night, I remember fast forward in a year later, to last season when we stayed up on the final day against Bournemouth, completely the opposite emotion. And it shocked me because I remember sitting there a little bit later on in that night thinking, wow, I was absolutely buzzing. Last season that Everton had stayed up, I felt like we'd come together, we'd dug deep, I felt like we'd, you know, we'd got through the odds. It felt like a movie, I think I said at the time, it felt like a movie. Last season against Bournemouth, I was fuming. The full-time whistle blew, and I was absolutely fuming that this football club had allowed itself to be in that position again. Two years on the bounce, and not learned any lessons from the previous year. I went home, I had the scan, and I was in bed by half ten. All my mates were phoning me saying, come out, come out, Everton have stayed up, Everton have stayed up. I said, no, I'm absolutely fuming, I'm disgusted with it. I'm absolutely disgusted with it. Fast forward now, and I don't know what to feel. Can we be disgusted? Because really, the board that are uh, responsible for putting us in this situation are no longer at the football club. The owner that is responsible for putting us in this situation is desperate to get out. <clears throat> the manager that is in charge is has done more than enough to get us out of this position, but because of the bad ownership, we're in this position because of a points deduction. We've got a takeover hanging by the thread with the Premier League effectively saying, yeah, well, we'll just decide what happens when we can be asked," And it's almost like, well, you can either be owned by this group of people and here is an endless amount of articles and information about why they aren't the right people to own you. Or you can be owned by this fella who quite clearly doesn't care and is already checked out and doesn't want to be here. Or you could enter administration and get relegated. It's almost, it it just feels like every angle at the moment to to come from is negative and has huge negative connotations and and, and potential negative, um, you know, consequences. And it caught me the other day because I was sitting there the other day thinking, this, we are within in a couple of months time going into our final season at Goodison Park now let me just let me just nail down the significance of this as Evertonians regardless of when you were born whether you were lucky enough to be born to see the teams in the 60s be hugely successful whether you were lucky enough to be born to see Everton dominating English football in the 80s, whether you were born just before the FA Cup final in 95, whether you were born like me just after that and haven't seen Everton win a trophy in all your life, whether you're only recently born in the last 10 years and don't know an awful lot. Regardless of when you were born, how old you are, what you've seen from Everton Football Club, every one of us has got the same thing in common and that is all we've ever known is Goodison Park. We've never known anything else. When we've thought about being at home, it's Goodison. 
when we've thought about those amazing nights under the lights, it's Goodison. When we all think of our favourite Everton memories, yeah, some people might have a cup final at Wembley. Some people might have, you know, a, 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 a European Cup Winners' Cup final. A lot of people of a certain age, their, their best memory of Everton Football Club will be in that ground. And I just feel like <clears throat> this change, which is monumental for this football club, will be overlooked by the fear and the anxiety about the future of the football club. And for me, I just worry that <clears throat> much like this season, much like last season, much like the season before, next season will be filled with dread, will be filled with anxiety, will be filled with worry, will be filled with, um, you know, pessimism. And it won't be filled with enjoying our final moments in the place we've only ever known. And I just don't want to be sat in Bramley Moor in six years' time, let's say, touch wood, when Everton have sorted themselves out and they are as sustainable as they've ever been and we've got a decent squad and we're, you know, fighting for European places in the Premier League and everything is absolutely, you know, as we would love it to be now. I don't want to sit there at that time and think, wow, I didn't even pay any attention to the fact that we'd never be sat in Goodison Park ever again because everything else that was going on occupied my mind. And I think that, for me, is why it's it's, it's so difficult at, at the moment is because we've got such an amazing change on the horizon. And it is, listen, I know some people are, are pessimistic about the stadium and, and the reality is Everton are being punished for building the stadium, but that isn't Everton's fault. Um, It is Everton's fault, the fact they didn't sort the finances out. But the reality is the stadium is a huge, huge move for the football club and it's a massive, massive step forward and it will be an amazing change for the football club. But we should now, especially now, now that we know <clears throat> next season will be the final full season, we should, from that point, the day we found that information out until the final game of, of, of next season when we leave Goodison, we should be savouring every moment of that and be appreciating how special that place is to our heart. But instead, we're worrying about whether or not we'll even be a football club at that time. We're worrying about whether we'll be a Premier League football club. We're worried about whether or not the owners that are said to be, you know, buying us will 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 have our best interests at heart. We've got all of this external noise going on that I feel like we are in danger of overlooking something that is hugely, hugely important and significant. Now, some people might say, and I've seen people say this on Twitter, I'm not asked about Goodison, get out of it as soon as possible, get out of it as soon as possible. I, I, I get it, I understand it. You know, we want to move into the new stadium, we want to progress, we want to move forward and not backward. I, I get it, I get it. But, it, it, you know, I, I think I tweeted the other day, when will we ever get any good news? When? When, when will we wake up as Evertonians to an article or... Uh, you know, a tweet or something regarding Everton Football Club that we all sit there and go, oh, do you know what? That's a boss bit of news. That even just even anything, anything, anything. We didn't even get it in January with a player. <clears throat> we couldn't even wake up and go, oh, Everton are signing this player or that player because we couldn't make it happen. And every article, every bit of news, everything that comes out of a journalist's mouth at the moment, you know, regarding Everton seems to be another, like I said, uh, another, you know, boot in the face for us as fans. And it, it's come at the worst time because it's come at a transition in time that all of our focus should be on enjoying and savouring those last moments at Goodison Park. Um, but instead, we can't. We're stressing, we're worrying, we're panicking. And that, for me, is just incredibly demotivating. And 
incredibly sad as well. Like, really, really, really sad. Really sad. You know, if 777 didn't have as much negative noise going on in the background, maybe it wouldn't be like that because maybe we'd all be dead excited about new owners. We're in a position now, and and I never thought a year ago <clears throat> when we all sat down and we all said, um, it, it probably wasn't even a year ago, just under a year ago when we all sat down and we all said, uh, you know, the board, the current board needed to go, they needed to be removed, they weren't suitable for the job, they weren't good enough, etc., etc. <clears throat> we would have absolutely loved the idea of Everton being bought and Everton being taken over and Everton, you know, being under new ownership and Machiri gone and Barrett Baxendale and Ken Rays and all them gone and moving forward into the new stadium with a new ownership and a new, um, you know, a new way of thinking, a new Everton, if you like. And yet, when we got that, it come with a load of worry and anxiety about whether or not the new potential owners are actually any better than the previous owners. Yeah. Uh, according to Telegraph Football yesterday, uh, 777 partners, directors and owners test verdict will likely come out within days of the verdict of Everton's appeal against their 10 points deduction. Uh, 777 partners and Everton are expecting to hear from the Premier League this week regarding the takeover. Well, that is effectively an hour and 45 minutes away. If we haven't heard anything by five o'clock today, I'm not quite sure we'll hear anything at any point. Um, certainly not this week. We will obviously hear something at some point over the course of the next few weeks, but if it's going to be this week, which the Telegraph's report suggests, then for me it will have to be within the next couple of hours because we're on Friday now and anything past five, six o'clock today... I'm not quite sure we'll we'll hear anything officially until Monday. Then we might there might be articles, there might be journalists writing about it, but officially, I'm not sure we'll hear anything until Monday if it isn't over the next couple of hours. So, like I said, you know, at the moment, one minute we we get an update stating that Everton, you know, could be within days of receiving the information about their points deduction and about the takeover. The next minute we get an article saying that seven 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 actually need Everton more than Everton need them, and that. That is worrying, isn't it? When you read that, if that sentence is to be believed and is correct, a new document has shown that 777 partners need Everton even more than the club needs them. How fucking worrying is that? Because Everton desperately need new owners. And we know that because if we didn't desperately need new owners, I don't think we'd even be entertaining the 777 conversation. So to even think that they need us more than we need them tells me that this isn't necessarily looking great in terms of you know whether or not it will be a success but yeah like I said you know I I, for me I'm not a financial expert I'm not a business expert I'm not used to sitting down and delving into the running of a football club and what you need to do in order to take over a football club and what needs to be passed and you know I'm not I haven't got an in-depth knowledge of 777's history and, and their history with previous employees or previous football clubs or previous businesses. I don't know, but it's fair to say I think a lot of us are feeling very, very, very anxious about the whole situation because we know if it gets passed, it's almost like, well, are these the right people? And And I, and I suppose, well, there's two ways of looking at it, isn't there? One way you could say, well, if if they were the right people, why is it taking the Premier League this long to pass them? Or you could say, well, if they were the wrong people, why haven't the Premier League just said, no, we don't believe you're the right people? And that, for me, is where the process is at fault because I'm just not having that this should have taken as long as it's taken. The Man United one has is, is, is started after ours started and has ended before ours has ended. And that shows you that this is taking much, much longer than anybody expected. And we don't know the reasons why. All we're told, we're told by the Premier League that it's because 777 haven't given the answers that the Premier League wants. But then we're told by 777 that they have given those answers. So, yeah. Basically... <clears throat> 
I don't think anybody knows what's going on. We're still very much in the dark, and we're still effectively in the same place we were three weeks ago, but with just more information about things that 777 have got going on in the background and more reports that we could be within days of a verdict. But we read two weeks ago that we could be within days of 777's ownership being confirmed and two, three weeks later, we've still not heard anything else. So one thing this absolutely is, is an absolute nightmare, like I said before. And just uh, it feels like every time... I think about this or I entertain this conversation. Have you ever seen that meme where, I can't remember who it is, I don't know if it's a cartoon, but somebody walks into like a burning building and everything's burning and they're just sort of standing there looking around. That is what it feels like when we when we analyse and talk about Everton's takeover at the moment. It just feels like you're standing there looking, thinking, fucking hell, is, is, there, any, is there any positivity here? Is there anything we can look at and go, oh, okay, that might be a good thing. It's worrying because it's our football club at the end of the day. And, you know, we are being messed around heavily, heavily on the pitch and off the pitch. And to say that within the next two years, we will have undergone one of the biggest and most important transitions in the club's history. It just feels like it's hugely being overlooked at the moment and it is because of the panic and worry about what's going on in the background but we'll wait and see we'll wait and see what happens anyway i just thought i'd come on and have a little bit of a rant and a rave about what's going on because yeah it's uh it's getting me down and i'm sure it's getting a lot of you down so there you go if you've enjoyed this one please leave a like we will be back with the game preview to that Crystal Palace game over the next 24 hours. So look out for that one. If you have enjoyed this, please do hit the like button. It does only take a second if you are new. Don't forget to subscribe. Huge thank you all for watching, and we'll see you after.